Alright, so today we're going to go through force vectors very briefly, and we're going to do a couple practice problems. Uh, we have first, we're just going to go through what a force vector is. Uh, so a force vector is basically just a um, an arrow, a f force with a magnitude and a direction. All right, and uh, that magnitude can can be labeled in many ways. Usually, you'll see it as vector a is equal to uh, let's just say um, which we'll just call it thirty miles per hour, and the direction they're going to usually give you a angle with it. Well, in order for this this force, this vector to go up and to the right because it is going right now it is going to the right and it is also going up. In order for this to go up and right, it has as you see an x and a y component. Well, what we can do is using trigonometry we can go through and we can actually find what those magnitudes are and we're going to use that using so ka toa and what you're going to see here is the s the c and the t the s stands for sine, the C stands for cosine, and the T stands for tangent. Okay. The O and the H in each of these, and A, the O stands for opposite, the H stands for hypotenuse, and the A stands for adjacent. All right, and we're going to use these three formulas to basically solve this. You, really, we're going to use two of them, but we're going to do one right here. We'll, we'll actually take this one that we have, and we'll actually use this one. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and our triangle is A... 30 miles per hour and it is at a 40 degree angle. Well, a 40 degree angle and that A, this number right here is actually what we can consider it's the magnitude of this. So we can just put it as 30 miles per hour right there. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this stuff since we Move it right there. Okay. And we're going to want to find the X and the Y. X being here, Y being there. Okay. Well, everything is referenced off of, when we're doing these equations, everything is referenced off of this angle right here. All right. So we need to identify the opposite the hypotenuse and the adjacent. The op op opposite hypotenuse and the adjacent right here. So we're going to do that right here. Well, we all know that this is the hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse because it is directly across from directly across from this angle, from this 90 degree angle that we made. We have opposite. Well, opposite is opposite of this 45. So if we look at this or this 40. If we look at the 40 and we draw a line directly across it, we're going to hit the opposite leg. So y in this case is our opposite. And then we have adjacent right here. Well, adjacent, adjacent is also another word for really next to. 
So we're going to take next to. We're going to look at the 40 degrees. And what's what's next to the 40? Well, there's the hypotenuse, which is already used. We've already described it as the hypotenuse. So all we have left is this x. So this is the adjacent. All right. So we're going to go through and use this. Well, the first one we can do, I usually start all the way on the left here. I start at sine, and I just work my way in. So we have the sine of our angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So O over H. O over H. So once we have our formula, we can just kind of plug it in. So we have sine of our angle that we referenced all of the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse off of was our 40 degrees. So we got to use that 40. We can't change it now. And our opposite value is y in this case. So I'm just going to put a y here. And our hypotenuse value, as we see here, as they gave it to us, is 30 miles per hour. All right. <clears throat> now what we can do, we need to get this y by itself because that's what we're trying to find. So we need to multiply this 30 miles per hour to both sides. 30 to both sides. So we're going to multiply both sides. And we're going to get, so I'm going to just condense it here. We get 30 miles per hour times the sine of 40 degrees equals y. And as you can see, we can just basically use our calculator now. Um, one thing you do want to remember when you're using sine, cosine, tangent, and you're using degrees, you want to make sure that you are in degrees <clears throat> on your calculator. So the easiest way to do that, I'll just put it over here for you is you're going to click mode and you're going to look about three down and you're going to see it's going to say radians and degrees just make sure that your degrees oops, is selected we just want to make sure that the degrees that we're in degrees because if we don't we're going to get some wrong answers okay so let's go back and we're just going to do the sine of 40. So the sine of 40, we get 30 miles per hour times the sine of 40 is 0.64, and I'm just going to do some rounding here. It's really 0.64278. So I'm going to do 0.6423. But really, when I put in my calculator, I'm going to put the whole thing in there. And then I'm going to multiply that by 30 miles per hour. And we get a y component. We get a y component of uh, let's see, y equals nineteen point two eight. I'll just and we're still everything is still miles per hour. So we're going to continue to use mph equals y. All right, great. <clears throat> So we have now found that y. We have now found this y. So I'm going to come over here, write that right in there. We got 19.28 miles per hour. Okay, 19.28 miles per hour. Well, as we continue on, we're basically going to do the exact same thing to find x, but instead of using sine now, we need to find adjacent. Well, if we look at our formulas here, we have opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we want to stick with this one. We want to stick with cosine, adjacent, hypotenuse. Um, we can use tangent, but the problem with tangent is if we use tangent, we're going to be using opposite. This opposite value that we found, this 19.28, we don't know if that's 100% right. So if we're going to try to avoid using that at all times, because if we get that if we got that one wrong, then we're guaranteeing that we're going to get the second one wrong. We don't want to do that. We we want to use everything that they've given us um, for as much as we can. So we're going to continue on. 
and do that. So I'm going to just put it down here. So we're going to do cosine of an angle equals, this one is adjacent over hypotenuse, and cosine. We're going to continue to use that 40 degrees. Everything is referenced off of that. So we don't want to change that. Okay, 40 degrees. Oh, change this. It's not H. Well, it is H, but we have a value for it. We're going to put in our 30. And we get 30 times the cosine of 40 degrees equals our adjacent, which is A. We continue on using that. So when you type it in, you get 30 cosine of 40. And you get a value of 22 point nine eight miles per hour equals a or x so we're going to come over here and we're going to put in 22.98 miles per hour so basically what we did is we just found the x and y components of this actual drawing here so zoom in so we can see just a little bit better we can see here 19.28 miles per hour 22.98 miles per hour and 30 so as you notice obviously the hypotenuse has to be the longest because it is the hypotenuse um, but what do you notice about this 22 and this 19 well you, you hopefully should notice that the 22 is larger than the 19 and that is because this angle, this 40 degrees, is less than 45, which means this triangle is going to be longer in the X than it is in the Y. It's going to be longer in the X than it is in the Y. All right. So that concludes this little force vectors tutorial. Um, I'm going to be making one on how you can add two force vectors.